Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, fitness management and consulting. And I know, you know, as we speak, as we watch this video or as we record it right now, you know, many clubs across the United States are starting to open. Uh, I think there's some still in the Northeast and that, that vicinity that have not, uh, maybe upper Midwest a little bit and uh, West Coast. But many gyms have started to reopen. And what I wanna do for you here today is break down a little bit an article that I recently wrote for Club Insider Magazine and talk to you about how to prepare your gym you know, for a successful comeback and strategies and things that you can start to think about to make sure this is a success. I know a lot of clubs that have already started to open you know, we, we've had clubs that have had as many as, you know, 10, 11, 12 sales day one. And so, you know, I don't know if it's going to continue at that level, but, but certainly there is a pent up demand, I think. And certainly, you know, folks are anxious to get back into the gym. And so the first thing I want to talk about here is the absolute need for certainty. You know, when we talk about this, you know, when we get back in there, you know, we need to have our head right. You know, not only us as the owner, uh, as the operator, as a director, but also our entire staff. If we're not able to go back in there with confidence and belief in what we're doing and the processes that we're taking and the certainty that we need to have, you know, it's going to be difficult for our members to have it. And I know many clubs are doing a very good job of this. But when you're sitting down and you're analyzing, you know, hey, what's the first thing we need to do? Let's go in here with certainty. And, and I would take this, this idea of certainty on everything that I talk about here. I'm going to give you several steps here we're going to talk about. Um, you know, certainty is, is maybe the foundation of each one of them. And so the, number two on our list is, is we want to suggest that we over-communicate with our customers. And where we get this idea, you know, to do this is we simply use it with, you know, retention numbers, uh, you know, that we see in the gyms. Whereas if you have an inactive member, um, and if we have one interaction with that inactive member, they're 20% more likely to return. Uh, if you have five interactions uh, with that inactive member, they're like 80% more likely to return. So we're using that same strategy and we want to over communicate, you know, let people know, let staff know, let members know, let prospects know, you know, always be delivering value. Make sure we're providing, uh, you know, really creating a community, you know, for your customers to come in. But we want, absolutely want to over communicate really across the board. Number three, you know, we want to provide what I would call unprecedented value to our customer. You know, let's, we, we use these strategies like during March and April and, you know, a good part of May, you know, prior to opening, you know, that whole idea of giving unprecedented value and what can we provide? What can we do, you know, for everybody? And same thing now, let's don't, let's don't get complacent with this. Sit down and look at this. What can we do as far as delivering more value you know, to our customer. And, and I would continue, and I'll talk a bit about this here in a second, but I'd also talk about, uh, you know, digital programming as well, but more value, more value, more value, an unprecedented level, because we're entering, this is a new economy, you know, that we're entering into. This is a new marketplace. We're going to have to be better than we ever have been before. Um, Next is, you know, we want to prepare, you know, for our members' uh, health and safety and all the strategies that we want to put together. And, and every place is a little bit different. Every state's a little bit different on this. Um, the, the basic advice that I would give on this is whatever your state is recommending, let's do just a little bit more. I'd rather see us do that because we want to, we want to, you know, give a message of, of health and safety and comfort, and we're going to take care of you, and we want it to be true. And so whatever your state is recommending, let's do just a little bit more than what they're saying. And maybe you're going to, you're going to check, you know, the member's temperature when they come in, vendors when they come in. Uh, they're going to have to sign off on a declaration statement that they are healthy, they've not had symptoms, um, you know, they've not traveled outside the country, perhaps. Um, you know, policies, regulations of, you know, how the gym will operate, um, you know, with social distancing and things of this nature. But make sure that we are absolutely preparing this, you know, for our members, for them to be healthy and safe, you know, when they come back in. Uh, we also want to do the same thing for our staff. 
uh, you know, staff. And what many places are doing is, you know, when it comes to, say, taking temperatures, you know, they're doing it twice a day. Um, you know, optional if they want to wear a mask. I know some places uh, here where I'm based, which is in Texas, uh, it's optional, um, you know, for folks to wear gloves, you know, when they're out and, and sanitizing equipment and how we're going to, you know, kind of handle all this. And if you have any staff that's simply not comfortable coming back, you know, let's create something if we can uh, for them to handle, you know, maybe your digital programming, you know, while they're, um, while they're waiting to return on a full-time basis. Um, marketing to your members. Um, this is one of the first things I think I would start to do. You know, via social media, I'd be creating videos and I'd be showing your members, hey, here's how we're going to look when you get back. Here's what's going to be happening. Here's what you can expect. Here's our promise to you. And here's how we're going to take care of you. And so really market toward your members, that, you know, how we're going to take care of them, how they're safe, um, how we're looking out for them. And here's what they can expect when they come back. And I know most clubs that have done this, for the most part, I would say it's been a pretty easy transition, uh, you know, getting folks back in. Now, the next one also is, is in marketing that we're talking about, but that's marketing for your gym itself. And, and that's marketing, you know, for your business. And what you want to do right now, and this is one of the best times to do it, you want to push and advance into this marketplace. You know, sometimes when you get into environments like this and you get into situations like this, there's a tendency to kind of hold back. There's a little bit of a guilt factor. I know some folks have about really pushing out to the marketplace, but this is your opportunity to really build relationships and get known by a whole new you know, group of people. And so push out, market, promote, because you do need to start making sales, you know, selling revenue, you know, driving business, you know, this is the oxygen to your business. And don't just rely on one or two methods to do this. You know, let's have a plan of action where our focus is we want to be known uh, by everybody in our trade area. If it's a three mile radius, hey, our goal is let's create an action plan that's going to allow everybody to know who we are. Now, the next thing on our list is we want to be preparing to sell in a new marketplace and in a new economy. It's not the same one that we left, you know, say back mid-March, it's different. You've got what, maybe by the time, you know, you, you watch this video, um, you know, we might be as high as 25, 30% unemployment. Uh, that's a big difference in where it was, right? And so we want to have, you know, different strategies, of course, but here's the first thing. Let's make sure that we are really spot on with our sales process. You know, it was there for a while, you know, when the economy was really good. Hey, if I didn't have success, you know, with this customer, well, there'll be another one coming in around the corner. That still may not happen. And you might find that folks that come in can't always afford it. Okay. So make sure that our sales process is tight. Make sure we're really working on it more than we ever have before. Now, I know a lot of gyms, I know certainly a lot of the, the folks that we work with, you know, they were, you know, doing a lot of digital programming, you know, throughout this process. I know a lot of folks have been doing it. You know, a lot of folks won't continue it. I want to encourage you to continue this because th this is not going to necessarily be a dominant part of what you do. But this can certainly be a key element for what you do and can be another, uh, you know, ancillary sales item on your website potentially. And, and there's a lot you can do with this. I mean, you can have closed Facebook groups. You can do live streams. Um, you can do Q&A sessions with an expert. I mean, you can do simple hangouts, you know, happy hour, you know, type programs. You know, the idea is to over deliver. We want to provide an unprecedented level of value. And I want to suggest you keep the digital programming going. If you haven't done it, you know, consider looking at, at that as something that you potentially can do. And then for now, it's complimentary as part of what you're doing. Eventually, you know, there's really no reason that this could not be an additional profit center for you, which truth be known, you know, you put that on your website and now you're really expanding well beyond a, uh, say, a three mile radius you know, for your gym. Uh, if you don't have it, you know, start looking at, and these are fundamentals that in a lot of cases we should have been doing anyway, but, you know, start looking at creating and developing additional profit centers in your gym, you know, selling supplements, selling retail, prepared, uh, you know, prepared, uh, pre <laughs> uh, uh, prepared meals, you know, for folks. 
um, you know, different things that we can do that can help us increase our revenue, you know, per customer. Um, this is something that, uh, like I said, we should have been doing anyway. A lot of clubs didn't. They were kind of outrunning it a little bit in terms of, um, in terms of membership sales. But now let's look at, you know, additional profit centers, you know, inside your gym. And then the final thing we want to know is not every gym is going to return. And some of us because, you know, financial and, you know, this, you know, the, the recent events just kind of pushed them to the point they can't. But then also, uh, you know, some folks just don't want to, you know, this is just a good time to exit and they're going to choose to exit. And this is a great time to really, in many ways, exponentially grow your business uh, by honoring those members, taking on that dues base, you know, getting those URLs pointed to yours, getting those phone numbers pointed to you, uh, getting email databases. You know, there's an awful lot in there that can be done that you want to investigate, you know, to be able to grow your business. This can be, you know, potentially, you know, one of the best times for your business if we'll take these steps and we'll do them. Okay, so I appreciate you watching. Hey, if you enjoyed the content, if you like the information provided, you know, hit the subscribe button below. You know, we're going to start, you know, providing more of these as we go through, you know, to help you navigate through some change. Because uh, as we speak right now, you know, roughly the middle of May, you know, there's going to be, a, you know, there'll be some bumps as we go through this. But this is going to be a great opportunity for many gyms to really flourish and to have success. Uh, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and Consulting, and we look forward to talking with you real soon.